Hi everybody, my name is Philip Reynolds and I'm a digital specialist here at the Heritage Foundation. Now, we know a lot of you are looking for information and have questions about dealing with this COVID-19 pandemic. And while there is a lot of good information out there to be found, there's unfortunately also a lot of misinformation and myths circulating. Joining us to debunk some of them is Dr. Kevin Pham. He is a medical doctor, but he's also a former graduate fellow in health policy at the Heritage Foundation and a contributor to the Daily Signal. Dr. Pham, thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. So the first myth is about social distancing. Does it mean staying inside at all times? As with a lot of myths, there's a small element of truth to that. You don't have to stay inside all the time. It's just that you're going to end up staying inside probably most of the time. But uh, social distancing just means that you stay away from another person if you don't have to be around them. The idea being that you don't want to transmit the disease when there's a chance that you may transmit the disease. So for instance, if you're within six feet of another person, if you're talking, if you're coughing or sneezing like that, then you may, you may, there's a chance that you may transmit the disease. Whereas if you're just outside going out for a walk, going out for a run, there's very little chance, unless you're doing that with a large group of people, there's very little chance that you could possibly catch the disease or transmit the disease. So you can definitely go outside. In fact, it's probably better now that it's spring to go outside. It'd be good for your health. It'd be good for your morale as well. Just don't do it in a large group. So another one that's been circulating around has to do with avoiding elderly neighbors and whether we should or shouldn't. What do you have to say about that? No, during this time, it's, it's hard for everybody. So try, so isolating, isolating your elderly neighbors, it really should only be a physical isolation. You should be spending time with them in some other ways. In this day and age, we have plenty of ways to communicate with one another and we should certainly avail ourselves of those. For instance, this video thing that we're doing right now, that'd be a good way to keep, keep in contact with not just your neighbors, but people mm -hmm. across the country. Um, and also, you can talk to your neighbors like from the sidewalk uh, and just keep them company. It might seem a little bit silly, but I think for health reasons, a little silliness is warranted. And also they may need help. You know, it's, it's risky for, for elderly people or people who are at risk, such as people with immune, um, immune issues, um, cancer patients and stuff like that, people like that. You can help them by going to the grocery store and picking stuff up for them and then dropping it off. And then you should wipe it off, wipe it off before you drop off. Um, anything that they may need, but it would help to prevent them from going outside if you go and help them doing something. So don't leave them alone. Everyone one is isolated in this time. We don't, we don't have to make it worse. We can actually make it better. Some people are saying that it's okay to go play sports. Is that a myth or not? Being that this disease is mostly transmitted by droplet, sports is probably the worst thing that you can do right now. It's one of the worst group activities you can do for disease control because when you're playing sports, your, your heart beats comes up you start breathing a lot more heavily and this is a respiratory disease so when you're breathing heavily you're also breathing out potentially um if the if you're the one who's sick you're potentially breathing out a lot of virus and um you know a little spit comes out when you're when you're playing really hard and that's that's where a lot of the transmission can occur that's where all the virus is so you're doing this you're playing two court two halves four quarters at a time you're spending a lot of time with other people who are breathing really hard at the same time there's a good chance that one of you is going to get infected that all of you are going to come in contact with the with the virus and if you're playing in a large enough group chances are one of you is going to be susceptible to, to severe disease nobody is immune to this now are there any sort of outdoor outdoor activities that you would recommend certainly going for a walk or going for a run in solitary groups uh biking would again in sol in a solitary um environment that kind of thing really a, like solo activities right now would probably be good um if you can still go for a hike, I would I would like that because usually you're not with large groups. But a lot of states have closed down national and state parks just because people tend to congregate in large groups like at parks because it's, it's beautiful and you want you want to be there with your friends. But now is not the time to be in in a group with your friends. It's now is the time to create social distance and maintain that just to prevent the spread of disease. Should you let your children play with other kids? This is one of those things that we have seen a lot of is that people think that children are immune to this disease. And there does seem to be some protective factor in youth and that children seem less susceptible to the severe disease. That is, they seem less likely to be um, hospitalized if they catch the virus. But the thing is, do you really want to risk a child on a less likely? Children can certainly get the disease and they can develop the severe disease. But even if they don't get end up getting hospitalized, they can certainly be carriers for the virus and they can transmit the virus even without being sick without any symptoms. 
So if you have children who are living with, for instance, grandma or grandpa, they can they can catch the disease, the virus, and transmit the virus to grandma or grandpa, and then you'll have a, uh, you'll have a very risky um, illness out at, in your household. And that's something that we should certainly avoid right now. How about this? Do people need to disinfect their groceries? There is a long supply chain that leads from a uh, distributor to the the grocery store, and then beyond that too. So there are a lot of um, <clears throat> a lot of contacts that is on your box of cheeses, for instance. And so if you want to disinfect that, you wouldn't be wrong to do so. The virus can stay on a hard surface for, for hours. That's, gonna, that's probably going to hurt you more than anybody else. So if you just think about this and then think about the surfaces that might be disinfected, then you can go ahead and wipe those down. But uh, you know, I don't want people to get hung up on trying to clean up everything in the grocery store because that's, that's simply not realistic. It would be better to, after you handle these things, go home and then wash your hands. And then if you have to touch it again, then you can wash your hands again. But after a couple of days, and the virus is probably not going to be on that surface anymore. So you should be safe. Again, it's the hand washing that's going to make the big difference here. How about masks? Do people need to wear them or is it just an unnecessary precaution? The CDC has really has changed its guidelines recently to recommend that all people wear masks. And I think that's a, that's a good idea and it's the right it's the right decision to make because Masks do the best when they're preventing people who have the illness from spreading to other people. And the problem with the coronavirus that we're dealing with now is that people are usually infectious for about two or three days before they even show symptoms. So if we have everyone wearing masks, then that makes it really difficult for the virus to spread from one person to the next person just because everyone's already wearing the masks when they're ill, when they're infected with the virus, but not necessarily ill with the disease just yet. So being able to prevent it like that will have a huge impact on uh, reducing the spread of disease. Well, Dr. Pham, thank you so much. That's some great information. And I know it's going to help our viewers and help the folks that they share it with as well as we all work to slowing the spread of this pandemic and making our country a safer place. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you.